Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Monogatari uh, off and Monster Season episode number two reaction. For a moment I forgot the name of the season. Um, so yeah, this is episode number two. Episode number one, it was the beginning of Oroka Monogatari. So basically, um, you know, obviously it's a story about the girls. So we didn't really see Aragi that much. However, the new story is basically that Ononoki got outed. She, Suki now knows that she's a doll, she's not a doll. So Onoki said that, oh, I'm a Maho Shoujo, I'm here to save the world, all that stuff. To make Suki understand that and leave her alone, she, just, she decides to go and ask for Nadako's help. Nadako makes like a little slug drawing that she has within her. And Onoki's plan was to defeat it in front of Suki so that she can say that it's over, now I'm off. Unfortunately, things doesn't go like that because the slug was a bit too stronger, a bit more stronger than she thought. And uh, in the end, Hachibuji comes and saves them. Ultimately, o uh, Ononoki realizes that Suki's situation is a bit different because of the phoenix. Whenever she gets like a mental trauma, it gets automatically healed because of the phoenix's power. That is why she never learns from her mistake. It gets automatically wiped out. That is why her personality is like this, this rambunctious all over the place, you know, never understanding the consequences of her actions. So she decides to keep an eye on her and decides not to report this to Kagenui. Unfortunately, in the end, she realizes that she makes the same mistakes and her whole identity that she is not at all gets outed again in front of Suki. So that's where it ended. So let's see what happens today. Episode two, let's get started. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it whichever is your preference and let's begin. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Sengoku, <clears throat> 15th year. <laughs> Drip. Love, 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 hate. Okay. <laughs> well, you're the protagonist, so, you know, you're not just a reader. Yep. True. That is true. Well, you'll be surprised. You actually have a whole ass anime on you. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Oh, wait, this is Nadeko Monogatari. Wait, so what happened to Oropa Monogatari? Was that it? Or will it continue later on? You know, sometimes Monogatari does that, like, you know, like, jump. Oh, look who it is! Ogi! <clears throat> oh, my... <laughs> Well, this scene seems familiar. <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> oh boy. Right. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah, she's like, wait a minute, weren't you a girl? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, she's like, wait, what? Yeah, the whole Kuchinawa situation. <laughs> wow, right. <laughs> For my current self, yep. Second year boy. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 
Bro. <laughs> well, because, you know, his connection with Araragi. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> Oh yeah, what is she doing in the middle of the road in the first place? Because she said she doesn't go to school. And she's like in casual wear. Who are you? What the? Cool uniform. Others. Ma okay. So is this is like some kind of a oddity. Okay. Hundred dollars. Yeah. Four hundred days. So more than a year. One year, two months, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every single hour. It's not that simple. All 24 hours. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. So two years. Two year. Two and a half years. Yep. Oh, so three, yeah. Four years almost. Three or four. What? Oh my god. After, even after, I guess. Ah! Oh. Yeah. I see. I was wondering why she's here. Four times a week. Wait, so what happened with the whole Suki situation? I guess she probably... <laughs> she resolved it herself. Well, indirectly. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Lose. Hmm.
Yeah, you need to go to school, basically. Oh, she's bringing that up. Damn. He's a silly mate. What? <laughs> and how are you? I'm the next computer. Okay, no, 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 no. No, she doesn't want that. She, this has been happening up until now. Oh, Lord. Isolated in school. Yeah, I don't think he'll, she'll want that. Yeah, in no way. Oh, oh, not this. Okay. In one year. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. Percentage of those who have Yeah. Quality of the effort made. True. Three times as much effort. Quality goes down. Oh. Oh, that's what's happening. That's why she's trying to find out a, herself. I see. So they probably ran away or something. <laughs> the one in the school uniform she was talking about? Fa oh my god. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, impossible. Can she really? I don't know. I guess that. Um, Speciality. What, you can make shadow clones? Like what? Kami. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, oh, so not really like clones, but <laughs> but is that really uh... 
Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, it'll work. It'll work amazingly. Because you're so good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Picking up on your brilliant ten. <sighs> yeah, true. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. More reason. I see. That's why she wants her to. Okay. That's why she wants to her to go and confront. Okay. Yeah, I see. She'll probably take her in. Exactly. She'll scout her. She'll be like, "Oh, come. You you can work for me." <laughs> Monster of connections. <laughs> All right. Myself, myself, myself. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Oh, that is a very good point. You know what? Good, good thinking. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you see. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, by Shinobu. Yep. Like, Oto Nadeko. Like, I, I don't understand. Will they really work for her? Yeah. This Koyomi. Yep, yep. I was gonna say. <laughs> oh, I see, see. Yeah. Yeah, and she went crazy. Rat <laughs> Oh my god, stop. Really? You're going to bring her out? Really? The Nadeko Medusa? Oh, um, why are they bringing them out? <laughs> oh no, this is not a good idea.
You think they're going to help you draw manga? Oh no, this... Like, you really think they'll all help you draw Mung? <laughs> they ran away! <laughs> How foolish! <laughs> yeah, that is true. You know what? Gan will be happy. Then she'll probably scout you. And... Okay. Out in the wild. Wow. <laughs> Dress cancer. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I feel like... Careless. Yeah, I was saying that they won't help you. Like, they, they don't... They have different... Oh no. <laughs> Four versus one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, they broke her. Kami Nadeko. She's gonna be a problem, the God Nadeko. Yeah, you think? Yeah. You know what? People probably say that it's like cosplay or something. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh no. Yeah. But I don't think they're type of people to cause trouble. Hmm. Ay yo, calm down. Which is... Oh no, I feel like it's like it's home or something. Oh no. Oh, never mind. <clears throat> yep. Alright! Okay, so this is Nadeko Monogatari. Okay, so wait. So did Oroka Monogatari end? Is that it for Oroka Monogatari? Or maybe we're going to go back to it later. We'll see.
Mm. That is it. Okay, that was Nadeka Monogatari, you know, the beginning of it. And uh, obviously, this is episode two of Monogatari of and Monster Season. So, like I was saying, I am. I doubt that was the end of Oroka Monogatari because Oroka Monogatari obviously is like a light novel. I doubt that was it. I'm sure there's a little bit more, maybe. I'm assuming they'll probably get to it later. For now, like, you know, we got to see that, and I'm guessing they're probably going chronologically. That's why after that, now this is happening. I'm guessing this is happening because it probably happens exactly after Oroka Monogatari. Because as you can see, they mentioned. Or, uh, you know, like Oroki's situation with Nadeko, and uh, not Nadeko, sorry, with Tsukihi, and, and they were talked about that briefly. So that happened, and now Oroki is going to Nadeko's place and like hanging out over here, and now this is happening. So I'm guessing because they're trying to do it chronologically, that's why we got to see a little bit of Oroka Monogatari, now we're seeing Nadeko Monogatari. Now maybe we're going to go back to Oroka Monogatari after that. Um, so let's wait and see. Either way, this is uh, Nadeko Monogatari, obviously, meaning this is Nadeko's story. And uh, so basically, the whole situation is that Onoki tells Nadeko to draw a sketch or draw four sketches of herself. And she's like, you know, because your parents gave you like a, like a time limit that, oh, within this time, you know, you have to stop all of this. You have to prove them that, oh, with, with doing, alongside doing manga, I can do my normal stuff as well. The fact that she's not going to school, obviously, is the reason why her parents are like, come on, what are you doing? You know, so you have to, um, you know, like prove to them or you can just, you know, like give you like, you know, like put, put all the effort, like that 10,000 hours they were talking about, all that effort in one year. How do you do that? Yeah, make four other copies of yourself. <laughs> they can help you out. But you know what the problem, like at first I didn't realize, but at first I was thinking she was going to make other versions of her current self if that was the case i would assume that they might have actually helped her out the fact that she made other versions of herself of herself in the past made it even more difficult like yeah i can understand making a, a, other versions of herself from the past obviously will help recognize her and you know separate her from the others but this was a very bad decision because obviously you need to think like it's the current Nadeko who's like this, who wants to do manga. If it was any other previous Nadeko, they wouldn't listen, you know. Obviously, like, they wouldn't be drawing manga in the first place. Because they were hiding it away from everyone, you know. So, how can you expect to make your past selves and expect them to help you out in drawing manga? In no way are they going to listen to you. <laughs> so, they all ran away. <laughs> and now, it's a, it's a troublesome situation. So, like, basically, that's what's going on here. And Nadeko is on her mission to find them out and bring them back. Now, there was another reason why Onoki said that I'm letting you do this. Because as he said, as she said, she's doing this specifically because of Gaian. Because the whole, um, you know, like, uh, mm, Kishot situation is all well and good. They have established that Kishot is, like, now harmless. So... Gain is not going to be doing anything with Kishot or Aragi situation, will not be interfering with that. However, Nadeko's situation is still not okay. You know, they're still keeping an eye on her. So in case in the future something happens, she might get completely exercised or something is going to, they might do something to her. You know, so she is like, because of that, you need to prove yourself to be useful. How do you do that? Basically, like, when I gave you the task to draw the, draw the slug, you know, you drew the slug in such a great way that it actually manifested. Uh, obviously, Sukihi also was a part of the reason why it manifested, but you know, without that even, there was a part of the reason why it manifested was also lied with Nadeko. So she's like, you draw your other selves, and if they come to life, and then I guess you'll pass, then Gain will probably, like, you know, like, realize that you're useful and might actually, you, like, your fear of getting, like, you know, exercised or them attacking you will probably subside because Gain will have an eye on you and she'll probably get interested in you if she realizes that you're, you have this, like, you know, type of ability or you can do something like this. So this, like, and as a pre precaution, she said, told her to do this as an experiment. 
and the experiment went completely haywire. <laughs> All of the Nadekos ran away and now it's a messy situation. So now it's Ogi helping Nadeko out to, you know, confront her past selves and I guess bring them back, you know. So that's basically what is happening in, in this episode. Um, it's nice to see Ogi back again. And obviously he's, he, I'm going to call him a he because it's, I'm pretty sure he's a boy now here. You know, he's a boy here. And uh, <laughs> this, I'm assuming he probably took this, took, took a boy's form probably because he, like, I don't know, as he said, like, this is like, you know, like a, this is like a different Ogi. So like this current Ogi, Oshino Ogi. So I'm assuming this is also like a, I don't know, but I guess it, it doesn't really matter. Ogi is a, like, you know, it's like everything, boy, girl, everything at the same time. You know, there's like, Ogi doesn't have a gender. So, you, you know, like, I guess it, it doesn't really matter. And even in, um, what's the name? Uh, Zoku Awari. Yeah, even in Zoku Awari, we got to see, you know, like Ogi, you know, Ogi was a boy over there. I guess the situation in Zoku Ori was a bit different because of the whole Koyomi reverse situation with the mirror world situation, you know, but you know, that, that kind of thing. So I guess, you know, it doesn't really, you know, like, it, it's, it's like the same thing. Like, you know, he's a boy here, he's also a girl, everything at the same time. This Ocean Ogi we're talking about, he doesn't really have any type of, like, you know, identity. Her whole, like, his or her whole identity is like nothing or, you know, like unknown. So that is why I guess it doesn't really matter. But I guess in a way you could probably say just like how this is like Nadeko's like new Nadeko, like all the Nadeko up until now were the old Nadeko and this is the new Nadeko. I guess you can say for Ogi as well, this is like the new Ogi or something like that maybe. I don't know. Um, and I guess that really makes sense why in Hanamonogatari we saw Ogi as a boy. Because Hanamonogatari happens after this. As far as my knowledge goes and my head, the chronological order of Mogatari is sometimes it, 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 it's so messy, it, it kind of, you know, messes up in my head. But obviously, Hanamonogatari definitely happens after this because Hanamonogatari, Aragi had, uh, I guess Aragi has graduated here as well, you know. But Aragi, I remember Aragi had a car, Aragi was learning how to drive, I think, and you know, like, she, she, he met Suruga you know, over there and all that stuff happened. Um, so obviously this is before Hana Monogatari. So in Hana Monogatari, we saw Ogi as a boy, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. You know, when Suruga met him. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and here now we're seeing him as a boy. So that, that makes sense, I guess. Um, like, you know, the consistency, it, it makes sense. <clears throat> so yeah anything else right so that is like the basic premise of today's episode basically we have to find the uh, sengoku nadekos back mm. and uh, a few things to discuss in today's episode number one how um, nadeko's parents told her that oh you have to like you know leave all these things you, you, you just stop doing these things you know these useless things and you know go and you have to like you know go to school and graduate and all that now you know in their defense obviously they are thinking like what is my daughter doing She's literally shutting herself in her room you know and just you know like drawing manga not going to school obviously to your parents they'll be like what the hell like stop all of these things and go back to school basically that kind of thing so i guess in that sense you could say that yeah like it's a very normal like you know like a reaction to this if you if your daughter of your, or your son is shutting themselves in their room and just drawing manga <laughs> not going to school not leaving the room obviously you will be like what the hell man like go outside you know like go to school so it's a pretty normal reaction you know as uh, ononoki says like up until now the fact that they never really said anything to you was the biggest problem the fact that they're actually telling you to stop this and go back to school is a lot of improvement actually that they actually are like telling you something and you know like actually like trying to scold you and be like you know don't do this go go back to school that is good that is at least an improvement because if you remember if you've seen 
you know, like the previous in the previous seasons, her parents were extremely. What can I say? Like, like they, they barely even said anything to her. And I remember there was that one episode uh, in Koi Monogatari where um, what's her name? What's his name? And the, Kaiki. Kaiki came in, and Kaiki was like, and they were like, oh, uh, don't open that uh, cupboard. And Kaiki was like, why? And they're like, oh, because my our daughter told not to open that cupboard. And later on, if you remember, Kaiki goes back, and I think in a monologue, Kaiki says something like, it is so absurd how what type of parents they are that your daughter has been missing for like so many days and instead of being concerned and trying to figure out where she is and opening the cupboard and seeing if you can find some clues they're still like like listening to what nadeko said and they're not opening the cupboard how much how can someone's parents be like this i think something like this that kagi kind of said how absolutely insane their family is like, just try to imagine how, like, it is true, like, Kaiki is 100% true. If your daughter is missing for so long, just because your daughter told you not to open a cupboard, you're not going to open it, obviously you have to open it. Your daughter is freaking missing. You know, any type of clue that you can find out, you'll try, you have to find out. But they never did that just because Nadeko told them not to do it. You know, that was what type of, like, what type of personality their parents had. The fact that they're at least telling her now, to go back to school is a huge improvement. You know, they're not like literally listening to her or anything. They're thinking of the, her, you know, like her, um, you know, like, uh, what's that word? They're thinking of her, um, the, the, the good of her. Like they're, th- they're trying to make sure that she's okay. And, you know, they, like she doesn't, you know, like go back to her previous, uh, you know, that, that kind of thing. I'm not trying to properly explain it, but the fact that they're actually telling her and not just listening to her is a huge enough improvement. That's what um, Ononoki said. And uh, yeah, it is true. It is true. I guess in that sense. Because at first I was like, wait, they're like telling her like all these things. And at first I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. But then I realized when Ononoki said that no, they're actually, Ononoki is actually correct. You know, the fact that they actually tried to tell her to do something and stop just shutting herself in her room is a huge enough improvement from the way they were previously because if this was the if the if, her, if their parents were like they were previously they probably wouldn't have told her anything at least they're telling her what's good and what, what's right and what's wrong what's good and what's not good that kind of thing not just coddling her yeah and it's very interesting because you know, this is the thing like i i love this about monogatari the more i watch this show the more i understand more about the characters like like you know like all these characters are obviously not like extremely obvious like they have like multiple layers to them you know like for example nadako is probably one of those characters which i had the most difficulty understanding up until now you know and the more i watch you know monogatari the more her situation comes into light and the more and more i rewatch it and everything the more i understand you know and you know after watching today's episode as well you know, I can I can really understand how what type of character Nadeko was. Like, like I said, like you know, it's like the understanding for Nadeko's character is extremely gra- gradual. Like when I first watched Monogatari, I didn't really like Nadeko. You know, because I like her whole like her character was highlighted in a bad way. But then more and more I watch it, more and more I realize her problem and the situation she was in. Like, you know, how literally, as she said, like, you know, the, the, she, she hated the fact that people treated her like this, you know, and also the fact she also took comfort in it as well. It's like a very weird type of a situation. The fact that people called her like a nice girl and, you know, like a, like a good girl uh, and never really said anything to her, to everyone. She was like the, the, the perfect person, that kind of thing. She hated that. And at the same time, she took um, shelter underneath that as well you know that kind of thing so which is why whenever someone called her out on that she got pissed off she was like i'm not at fault it's the world that at fault people treat me like this if you remember when shinobu like literally <laughs> like just talked smack to her like in one episode i forgot which episode it was shinobu literally said that oh like it must be nice being cute huh like you know everyone just listens to you everyone and she was like no i'm I don't like that. I hate that part, you know. And Shinobu was like, ah, like, yeah, like, you know, 
like you know like uh, good like you know like i i hate cute brats like you something like that she said <laughs> like oh my god like that's why she like like reacts like that because she herself doesn't like the way people treated her but at the same time she herself took shelter in that as well you know so it's like a very like conflicting type of situation a very you know like a contradicting situation where she took comfort in something that she never liked you know and so now it's it's so different she's she has changed a lot as you can see you know and how like you know like she perceives herself how she perceives the world you know that kind of thing like she's she's ready to get hurt up until now she she always kept herself the nice girl because she didn't want to betray others expectations or get hurt by others you know but now she understands that if you are living life you will fall sometimes and it will hurt you you know you cannot always like keep sheltering yourself in your shell um that kind of thing anyways um so yeah and uh, and that is why i was like it's such a bad idea why are you why are you making your past selves who literally have nothing to do with the current you you know like like i i could just imagine i'm like really like you what what do you what what do you think if you tell them to help drawing manga you think they'll help you they couldn't care less because they're the past versions of you you know and that's exactly what happened they just ran away at first i i'm guessing they they kind of showed us here in today's episode where nanako told them to help her out and everyone was like nope i ain't doing that and they just ran <laughs> good god and now there's four nalekos running around in the city and as they said like if one of them commits some kind of crime or something happens which i doubt is going to happen they're not the type of girls that will commit crimes but who knows maybe something happens and everything's going to fall on nadeko like then then what what are, what is she going to do you know it's a very bad situation so she needs to go and like bring them all up in <laughs> right and Ogi is helping her to do that which is kind of funny because in in a way Ogi is also kind of Araragi you know but at the same time Ogi is not Araragi as well i i guess you could you could have probably said that Ogi was more Araragi back when she didn't have an identity but when in the end of Owari when Oshino comes in and literally calls her her cousin his his uh, niece she got an identity and the darkness left so she i i guess in in a way you could say ogi is actually ogi now like he has an identity you know but at the same time he's also araragi so i guess that's why i'm saying it's kind of funny because you know again like araragi is literally helping her in that sense if you think about it but obviously ogi is not araragi in that way but still like like he's also like he's araragi and not araragi at the same time it's it's a weird type of situation ogi is like you know so yeah Okay, and uh, is there anything else? No, that was it. That was today's episode. So let's see how this goes. I think they're probably going to be continuing from here, you know, because in the even in the previous episode, I thought we would be continuing Oro Kamono Gatari because they ended in a weird way, and I was thinking like, oh, now that her identity is out again, you know, maybe something else is going to happen. He she'll probably try to convince Suki that she. is a magical girl and is going to repeat again kind of like that but nothing happened it they just ended it there and now we are in a new start of a new story but the way this episode ended i'm pretty sure next episode will you know resume from here so yeah i guess next episode will also be nate komonogatari okay right and that was today's episode now let me talk about this episode scene by scene In the very first scene you can see Nadeko talking about how if her story was like a manga it would have 15 volumes obviously meaning she's 15 years old and she's talking about how everyone would be confused of her personality because it's all over the place and it's true because in the beginning you can see there's a section where it's written love 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 hate which is literally what happened with Nadeko's you know personality you know she loves Aragi she loves Aragi she loves Aragi and then finally she hates Aragi <laughs> because that was literally what happened you know like and in, in koi monogatari she wanted to kill her kill him and everyone else so you know that's why she's like it is an inevitable fate for a long running series you know and 
And she's saying perhaps being a true fan also means loving the series even though such consistencies are there. Um, yeah. And... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and she says that's especially why the snapshots of my past feel like completely different people. And it's interesting because I guess that's literally what happens in today's episode where, you know, all these snapshots of her past that she brought to life, they are completely different people. And that's why they didn't listen to her. They were like, screw you, I ain't drawing manga. I'm going to do whatever I want to. <laughs> and this is left. Um, anyways, and uh, okay. And after that, you know, the, oh, the after that scene, we get to see Nadeko's running in the street and uh, she meets Ogi here. And oh my god, deja vu, the whole scene with Ogi just tripping on her bicycle. Absolutely hilarious. The same thing happened before as well. As, and, and even like the way she, like, you know, Ogi trips is also so similar. Like the way he, he does the flip, falls down and it's like the bicycle also comes along. Uh, it's the same thing. <laughs> and Nadek was like, wait a minute, is that Oshino Ogi? But then she's like, but Ogi was a girl, wasn't she? But in her head, she's like, okay, I'm so confused. You know, either way, Ogi gets up and Ogi's like, oh, like, you know, isn't it Sengoku Nadeko? Um, my name is Oshino Ogi, nice to meet you. You know, and uh, then, <laughs> and then you can see here, I guess her memory kind of re like arranges itself because at first she was like wait it wasn't Oshi no Ogi a girl but then in her head it kind of sets back and she was like oh no Oshin Ogi was already a boy I'm guessing this is probably like the universe at work where it like fixes inconsistencies like in her head there was probably an inconsistency of an inconsistency of Oshin Ogi being a girl but now that she's seeing him as a boy it probably fixed itself in her head and now she's like oh yeah well, he was already a boy you know, something like that. I remember the same thing happening with um, Kanbaru as well, if you remember, in Hanamonogatari. Kanbaru at first was also like, wait, wasn't Oshino Ogi a girl? But then in the in middle of it, later on, she was like, oh no, he probably was always a boy or something like that. So I'm, 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 I'm just guessing, maybe this is like something like that, where the universe like, you know, fixes the inconsistencies and it's something like that. Because obviously up until now, they saw him as a her as a girl, but then now he's a, she's a boy. It's an inconsistency in everyone's memory. So I'm guessing when they're seeing Ogi now, the inconsistency gets filled up and it fixes itself. And they are thinking like, oh no, he was always a boy or something like that. Who knows? I'm, I'm assuming it's probably a very few people who still remember Ogi as a girl, like Araragi, maybe uh, Shinobu as well, I guess, because they're connected with Araragi. She's connected with Araragi. That's why I, I'm assuming uh, Shinobu and Araragi will probably remember her. Um, Oshino Meme will also remember her, I think, as a girl. Maybe Gain as well, you know. So, yeah. Okay, anyways. Um, so, this is where, she, like, you know, like, Nadeko like, calls her him, like, Ogi-san. At least he's like, oh, like, don't call me Ogi-san. Call me ogi oni -chan. And then she, he, he's also like, oh, you, you don't like that? You know, doesn't it remind you of what's the name senpais like the way you used to call him obviously he's talking about aragi and then she, he does like the whole oh sure kamimashita you know the whole hachikuji joke <laughs> she does that um anyways all jokes aside um you know she's like oh i need to go and he's like oh okay like i thought you were in school uniform i don't see you in school uniform what's going on i just met you a few a while ago at which she comes back and she's like wait you met me in school uniform? Where is it? And this is where we get to know, you know, like what actually happened. So Nadeko starts talking about the 10,000 hours rule as to how if you do something for 10,000 hours, you're going to get extremely good at it and you're going to like, you know, become successful at it. You know, so she says like to round it up each day since it has 24 hours, I'm going to round it up to 25. And then if you, you know, like divide it like that in, in one year, you'll probably have like uh you know like uh 1000 hour uh, sorry 10000 hours is probably like one year two months or something like that and then also she says that because like people need to do a lot of other things you know like all 24 hours someone cannot really just do their thing you know 
So we have to scratch, like take that out, majority of it out, and say that each day people can um, invest in their craft for eight hours. So eight hours is one third of 25 hours, uh, 24 hours, which means you need like three years. If you every single day you practice your craft for eight hours at least for three continuous years, you will be successful at it or good at it. That is how it goes. So she's like, so now I have to do this for three years, you know, which is kind of intimidating, but obviously, you know, like we have to do this, put up this amount of effort. However, the problem isn't the three hour, uh, three years that she'll have to try hard. The problem is that her parents gave her an ultimatum. They were like, <clears throat> stop these useless things, go to school, and here we go, stop doing these stupid things forever. Uh, okay, school, uh, reality, dream, money, worries about future, all these things, yeah. Go to work once you graduate from middle school. That is a problem, you know. So, like I said, obviously, it makes sense, you know, like the fact that they are saying this because if your daughter is like shutting herself in her room, literally doing nothing and just drawing manga, you'll be concerned, not going to school and everything. So they're like, stop doing this, go to school, graduate and go to work. <laughs> they're basically saying that. At which, you know, Oronoki says, says that that's good because at least your mom and dad are actually telling you something, telling you off. If this was your previous mom and dad, how they were, they literally wouldn't have said, told you anything. So this is improvement. I kind of talked about this before a little bit. And I also kind of agree now that I'm thinking about it. It is true because of the whole situation that we saw before. You know, like the, her parents were also very similar to how they doted on her was like in such a weird way. They doted on her, literally didn't tell her anything, didn't turn her off. Like everything was okay. So at least they're telling her off now if she's not doing something in a correct way. You know, here we go. Ono says Nadeko Sengoku's doting mommy and daddy after uh, spoiling her completely rotten have finally reluctantly or rather indulgingly taken some action. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, this is worthy of celebration. But either way, um, you know, like the problem here is not that. The problem is that she will have to stop this. Something that she enjoys herself you know, to do. And here, Onoroki, uh, Nadeko kind of tells how Onoki is coming here now and then after the whole slug situation. She's coming here like at least four days a week or something. And not only that, she helps her out as well to pose and like an you know, act as her model. So it's helping Nadeko out as well. But now the problem, this problem has been brought up. So Onoki is trying to help her. Okay, so she tells her that, you know what, your mom and dad are not really wrong. You know, you know, like to go for your dreams, you have to do, make sacrifices, this and that, you know, like effort, making money and all that stuff. So you cannot really, you know, just do this so this is where the whole ten thousand hours of doing something this whole thing gets brought up at which onoki says that ten thousand you know like it's funny because onoki says that oh it's hilarious because you before gave senjogahara a time limit and now you're falling into the same problem and she's like yeah you know it is my fault like you know you reap what you sow that's literally me um, yeah. Anyways, Onoki tells her that I have a plan. I have a way for you to properly do this. So Nadeko's plan basically is to make something out of her manga, making manga, and to show the results to her parents, a significant result, which her parents, after looking at, will probably be like, hmm, maybe what you're doing is not that stupid after all. You know what? You can continue doing it. Something like that. And to do that, to prove it to them, she will have to make some kind of considerable progress and give some kind of considerable results in front of her parents. And to do that, she will need to do 10,000 hours of practicing. As she said, unless and until you at least invest that amount of time in something, you're never going to be able to produce any result. But she doesn't have that time. That is the big problem. So she will have to present this result in front of her parents within this like in you know, one year but she doesn't have that time to produce that result so what should we do at which onoki comes up with a plan she says like there's two plans like there's two things you can do one i do not actually 
suggest and other one you can easily do the one that you can easily do is basically put your face on the manga that you're drawing you know a picture or something give a little autobiography people will look at you you know they'll feel sad for you and you'll probably get popular you know same thing with where you like upload your uh, manga in the internet and anonymously don't be anonymous anymore post your face post your backstory and all that people will read it probably get sad and they'll probably pity you and then you know like they'll read you and in that way it's a it's a very good way of gaining popularity you know you can easily do it and the thing is like it's not even something like you know you, you, you it's not like something that people will look down at you upon if you do it it's also a viable way of you know like gaining popularity is fine but the thing is that Nandako is not okay with it because this is how she has been living her life up until now if she goes back to this now she will literally be like like renouncing the new Nadeko that she has become and going back to her past she doesn't want that she herself said this multiple times i don't want people pitying me looking at my face i don't want people coddling me i don't want the world to be nice to me you know i hate that and if she does that she'll literally be doing the same thing again so that is why in the end onoki was i know that you'll probably not agree to it and she's like yeah i won't agree with that then she's like then we have the second way you can do it which i don't recommend which is you have to do this 10,000 hours of like practice in one year and now was like how is that possible like you know like and she's like oh it's not that you have to triple your effort you have to like make yourself triple so if there's three of you three of you can put in the effort and you know it'll be the same like so it'll be three times that's how you can do it and then she says that but for safety purposes i'll make five of you so if you can make five duplicates of you or four duplicates of you you are the number fifth one then all of them together will be putting the effort and you can easily reach your quota and do something significant with your time so that is the whole thing so how do we do that this is where ononoki tells her that oh basically you have to you know like <clears throat> Okay, she says, okay, I'm going to uh, read this part here. It's rather cheeky to use Gami or, you know, Shihigami's Gami, which also means God, in front of you, who used to be a God. Um, so you can call it a fam familiar. Putting it frankly, it's like faithful servant that walks for the sake of the master. Hmm. So in my case, my master big sister cannot walk on her leg ground, so I walk as her legs. So she talks about all of this. She says how she's also a chikigami. So, you know, she wants her to uh, make some shikigami as well. And that is like her duplicate cells will be her shikigamis. And she can make them work for her and it'll, you know, triple the amount of effort. And in one year, she can accomplish it. But how do you do it? She's like, draw four copies of you. And this is when Nadako tells her that you can actually you know like the whole slug situation your picture came to life obviously suki he was one of the reasons for it coming to life but your drawing was also another reason so i feel like you can probably do this you can probably make your previous selves and make them come to life and this is where she talks about gain as well and she says that in case something happens and you like you know they since they still have an eye on you you know in case something goes wrong and if they target you, I'm telling you to do this because if you are able to do this and accomplish this, making your own shikigamis, then Gain will have an eye on you and she will, like, you know, in, in case in the future something bad happens to you, she will probably help you out or take you in, you know. So you have to make her interested in you. If you're able to do that, you know then everything is fine your future is you know it's fine everything will be okay you'll not be in danger at least in the future how do you do that by accomplishing this if you're able to accomplish making making at least one shikigami come to life then she will be interested you know and in the end you know like as we see she's able to bring all of them to life so you know <laughs> yeah so it worked perfectly either way that is the reasoning she gave her and uh, not only that and then she also kind of talks about how you know she cannot make her herself now the new nadeko here because if it's the new nadeko that she makes 
they'll get confused who is the real Nadeko and it'll be a troublesome situation you know like like they might try to take over your identity and stuff <laughs> you know which obviously like you know like Nadeko gets very like concerned about so she's like yeah I cannot make myself my current self so they decide to make the previous Nadekos and this is where I was like this is not a good idea like her previous selves will listen to her why would they they're completely of a different personality and different you know like you think they'll just listen to you the new nadeko you think they'll listen to you no yeah they'll probably get pissed off at you and just do something else and that's exactly what happens so basically to make them different she makes the different hairstyles so the first one is meek nadeko which is obviously the nadeko before with the bangs you know who was always very meek and everything then we have the flirty nadeko who was you know always trying to make koyomi look at her you know that nadeko then we have the angry nadeko or like the wrath nadeko i think that's what they called her who was pissed off after you know that that whole nadeko whose bangs was cut by suki and who went crazy in her school that nadeko and then we finally have the god nadeko or nadeko medusa who is obviously the goddess nadeko with the snakes and everything you know that one so all of them and uh, yeah she brought them to life and now fast forward back to the present ogi is helping her trying to find them so basically what happened is she made them and they ran away you know and ogi is now trying to find them nadeko is also trying to find them you know so that's what's going on and that's why you know like ogi the the nadeko that ogi found the the school school uniform you know nadeko there is a meek nadeko you know they're trying to find her and ogi is like all right i will help you out um okay you know what's funny this is one thing that ogi says here up until now whenever ogi said that whole line like oh it's not me that i it's not me that knows everything it's you that knows everything aragi you know if this this was like a thing that she he used to tell and it makes sense because now that you know who Ogi is, that line makes so much sense. Why she or he always used to tell that, you know, to Aragi. Because it is true. It wasn't her that knowed every, knew everything. It was Aragi. And her, wor her job was to make Aragi remember, you know, you know the whole self-loathing part of himself. You know, that kind of thing. So, now, she, he's saying the same thing to Nariko, but he's saying that, Oh, it's not me who knows everything, it's you who knows everything, Nadeko. Which again is, I guess, true in a way, because this is Nadeko's situation and Nadeko is trying to find herself. So it wouldn't be Ogi who knows something, it will be Nadeko if, who, who will know something where to find them out or something like that, you know. Anyways, so yeah. And... Uh, this is when Ogi also brings another thing up where she's, he's like, the one person I'd be concerned about is not God Nadeko because God Nadeko will probably have some kind of visual, you know, like thing that will probably make others not realize she has snakes in her head. The one person that I'll probably be concerned about are the other three Nadekos, you know, because, you know, like they, they probably uh, might do some kind of a problem make some kind of problem and if the police get them then you will get convicted which is true and i guess it makes sense because at least the third nadeko which is the the crazy one the girl that went crazy in school she is going to be a problem because she might go and start breaking stuff and if that happens she's getting arrested immediately <laughs> i don't think the meek nadeko would be able to do anything the flirting nadeko might fall into some other problems i don't know like some you know I don't know what will happen. I don't think the meek Nadeko will have any type of problem. She'll just probably just do nothing, I guess. Who knows? We'll see. The one that's the two, two ones, the two that I'm most concerned about, the one that I'm most concerned about is the 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 wrath Nadeko and the flirty Nadeko. And as as she said, as Ano Ogi said, the god Nadeko would also probably not be a problem because she won't really do anything to make trouble for others. Because that wasn't really her personality. She was just happy being worshipped. That was all. And, the, and she just hated Koyomi. I guess it'll be difficult. <laughs> There's one problem that might happen in God Nadeko's situation. If somehow he, she comes across Aragi, oh no, that'll be a problem. She, she might actually try to kill him. And that's how she might get 
arrested. <laughs> yeah, that is a problem. You know, I never thought about that. If by any chance God Nadako met Aragi, that will be a huge problem. You know, uh, but other than that, I don't think she'll be much of a problem either. Yeah, like Rath Nadeko will be a problem because like I said, she might just start breaking stuff or something and in the process get arrested. <laughs> oh Lord. But anyways, so in the end, you know, they, they come, the location where Ogi had seen Meek Nadeko come is her middle school, I'm guessing, yeah. Which makes sense, I guess, because, you know, that's Meek Nadeko back when she was at school and when she used to go to school. I'm guessing the first thing she probably did is like she did was like go back to school and yeah anyways that is where it ended so great episode and uh, yeah now we have this mission of trying to like bring back Sengoku Nadeko all the different Sengoku Nadeko bring them back and yeah so there you go and that was it guys that was my reaction to episode number two if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out that is it thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next week with another episode of monogatari off and monster season until then goodbye and have a nice day